I'm outside Westminster Kingsway College. I'm about to go in and meet Jose Suto for one of his game lectures and seminars. So once you get back to Lada now, we're gonna basically start to break it down. So you take the legs off first, and when we've got the joints at the back of the legs, we cut round. And like I said, normally when we go to the to the larder, these carcasses would always the legs would already be off. Yeah, you wouldn't basically have the legs on, um, and then normally the heads would be off as well. And um, we've kept them on here so that I can basically show you how how it's done. So once you've done that, you crack it, yeah, and you break through and take the leg off. The other one the same. The legs and the head are considered to be a dirty part of this animal, so that's why the legs and the heads will normally be all taken off beforehand. And there's nothing you can do with the head. Uh, with the head, apart from like stuff it. Um, you can use the you can use the um, uh, the cheeks off of it uh, if you wanted to basically cut the cheeks. Um, but a lot of animals are shot in the head, so it basically destroys the cheeks. Yeah. So they tend not to, we don't tend not to use it. Uh, the only place that basically you see cheeks a lot would be on a deer park, you know, where they have lots of animals that they're, they're cutting on one time, or animals they're putting through uh, an abattoir that you can basically get the, uh, the cheeks. But for the wild animals, we don't tend to use it. The back legs, um, if you see that the, the foot is quite tight, and if you cut up that here, first thing you notice is the foot goes slack. Yeah, that's because you're in the right place that you've cut through where the joint is. Yeah. And you've got a cut above the Achilles tendon, because if you as soon as you cut that through that Achilles tendon, yeah, then you can't hang the deer anymore. Right. So once you've done that, then that'll break off. The feet, um, you know, you can't really use a body cube for hope. Rack, you know, if you to make a bit of a morbid coat rack, but <laughs> again, this one see tight, get cut through, makes them loose. If you cut in the right place, they're loose. If they're not loose, you're not cutting in the right place. Yeah. Apparently, not that I do a lot of skiing, but apparently that's not the noise you want to hear when you ski. <laughs> I don't know why. But, yeah, so we get rid of all these feet. <coughs> now we're going to take the head off. Now the head is basically connected to uh, the neck, the viral joint, viral joint that's called the atlas joint. And that's at the base of the skull. So here, where the ears are, that's where the atlas joint is. So you go right behind the ear and cut down. Knife the other way, all the way around. And then if you go the other side, the base again, cut the other way. And then you'll come to the base of the atlas joint. Put your knife in, into the middle of it. And it's sort of like a W joint. I've, what I've gone through here is I've cut through now into the, um, the spinal cord. And now I'm cutting on one side of the upper joint. And I'll just take the head and just pull it to one side. Just put it up the upper joint. Okay. See it coming up. There it goes. There goes one. And there goes the other. So it's a W shaped. See, it's a W shaped joint. This is the base of the skull, yeah, and that's the spinal cord in the middle. Okay, I'm out. So again, not a lot we can do with the head, so we get rid of the head. <coughs> Don't think my bin men have ever got used to that. <laughs> <laughs> so now let it down a bit, we're going to start skinning it. So start on the inside of the leg. What we do is we pull the skin to one side and we come up along the inside of the skin. Oh, this has got loads of 
loads of ticks on it. It was about the, the first time I've had the, the most ticks I've ever seen on a deer. So, up all the way up the inside of the leg, and then we start to open it out. Yeah, and just use the knife. Now these these bony knives, these flint and flame bony knives, are really good because what they do is basically they've got little, they've got that curved blade. And as you start to to break the skin away, it allows you to get behind the skin really nicely. So what I'm doing is I'm using the knife at an angle like that. I'm not using the knife straight, it's at an angle. And I'm just, as I'm using it at an angle, because I can get behind into the skin, see? You're pulling it away. And this has got a little flank of meat here. Just pull it around so you can see. There's a little flank of meat that basically sits on the inside here. Yeah, and you can see the tip of that knife going behind there as I'm putting it out. That's what's lovely about this knife, the fact that you can do that. Yeah, is you can get behind, right behind that little flank. And it means that we're not wasting that flank. Yeah, we're keeping all of that meat. See, all the way down. I'm getting right behind it. Get, you know, really nicely, nicely clean. Yeah, and that's what we want. The skin nice and clean. We don't want to waste anything. As chefs, we want to basically make as much money from this carcass as possible. So, for the benefit of my guys at the back there, yeah, have you guys got a, what have you got a notepad? Make a note of this. So we had basically the carcass, you got a notepad? Someone got a notepad? You should all have a notepad for this lesson, guys. But we've got a 36.7 kilo, so say it's 30, 37 kilo animal, yeah? So if today's price is a 37 kilo animal, yeah, it would be, reckon, I reckon around about 290 a kilo. Okay, so what does that make the carcass worth? Uh, ten, 11 grand. 11 grand? <laughs> Jeez, come on, come on, come on, you're <laughs> <laughs> 290 a kilo, £2.90 a kilo, not 290 pounds a kilo. This is not caviar. <laughs> How much? 87 pounds, okay? So we've got an 87 pound carcass, all right? Yes, I have. So basically, what I was talking about earlier on, the ticks. Yeah. yeah so this one's got ticks on it, so if you look just there, that's a tick. Looks like a grape sitting on there. Yeah. Yeah, and then all these little ones here, they're all ticks. Yeah, and they're ones that have bitten into the deer and they're feeding, they were feeding off the deer. And um, obviously, because it's cold, they've all gone dormant. They're just like, they're lying there at the moment. And as it starts to warm up, they all start to crawl around. Um, but you try, try to keep away from them. If one bites you, the, the worst thing you can do is basically try and pull it off. You have to have a special little V-shaped thing to take them off of you. Um, I, I must admit, in all the years that I've been stalking, I've only ever been bitten by a tick twice. Um, but you've got to be very careful because they carry Lyme's disease. Right, so we're going around the back of the leg here, yeah? And you see the way that knife carves around the back? Yeah, we're not gonna leave the skins. Yeah, there's no meat on this skin whatsoever. As yeah, we're doing that. Then we're gonna go up the other side of the other leg. Do the same sort of thing. So from the inside of the leg, up. Normally with deer down here in the south of England, uh, ticks is about as bad as they get. Um, otherwise, we get a thing called warble fly, which is basically a larvae that lives, it buries itself into the back of the animal, and it's like, um, it, it goes into the back of it and it sits in there in little, that, little lumps. Looking, it's like a larvae, oh. yeah, and you pull them out, you can pull them out, basically when you take the skin off the deer. Um, but we don't tend to see a lot of that. We see more of that in Scotland than we do down here. So there we go, we're going on one side, we're gonna come the other side here now. I'm just gonna grab this and give it a pull. This is the, what probably takes the longest to do, is this 
little part of, of making sure that all the skin is off. Because if we start to pull all the skin off without doing this, um, we end up losing the flakes and all of that meat ends up on the, on the skin, which you just go throw in the bin. Right, so you're trying to make as much money as possible out of this, so you want to keep it nice and clean. And uh, for me, it's a way of basically respecting the animal to get as much as it can off of this animal. <coughs> yeah, to get as much meat off this animal as possible, not to waste anything. <coughs> there you go, sorry. So the, the bottom of the legs here, what we try to do is I try to take as much as I can all the way up, but I'm being very careful not to cut through the, uh, the Achilles tendon. So then what I'll do is I'll leave this end bit, what I call the socks, <coughs> on the animal. And then what I'll do is later on, I will basically take those off when I do the haunch. So I pull that back. And we're starting to pull it back on itself. We're still folding it back on itself, yeah, so that we're not contaminating the carcass. Oops. This meat is still very, very spongy. when the meat's colder and also when the meat's had a few days to rest. Yeah, this, this animal was still quite fresh. Yeah, so if it was basically uh, another two or three days older, it's uh, it, it just, it's cleaner. I mean, it, the skin's coming off nicely now, but it's just, the meat the meat's very wobbly. See, it's not set. Can you eat the offal? Yes, can, yeah. Although a lot of the offal basically, unless it's expressly asked for, uh, tends to be left with the grollock. If the animal's been shot in the chest, um, then basically there's a chance that the grollock will have uh, the, they'll be damaged on the, on the liver and the, and the other bits. So basically that's why it's not used. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, but sometimes uh, if the game dealers are asking for, for the liver, yeah, the, uh, or the, yeah, if you've got the deer farm, deer farms are places where you're more unlikely to get it. Right, so now we've got to this part here, what we do is we cut through one of the joints on the tail. So we find one of the joints, and just cut through it. Yeah, so that gives me now a hand to hold on to. And on this side, and we start punch, what's called punching out, which is where we're using the fist to push meat away from the carcass, <coughs> or the skin away from the carcass. See, it's really, really, see how wobbly that is? Yeah, it's like, this is where now we're gonna get a little bit more difficult when we're coming back to this bit of the back here, because this will tear now as we're starting to put off. But it's done a couple of days old, we didn't have any of that. So if it was a couple of days old, you'd just be able to pull it and just be... No, no, just it, like, at the moment now, some of the skin is starting to catch. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be, because it's just, it's just not had time to relax. Yeah, so with, on a, 
if we'd had a, a couple more days, that skin would detach, it would be easier to get off. You still, you still have a struggle like I'm doing now. Yeah, it would be, you know, it's not gonna come off like a glove. Yeah. But um, it's, just, it's just a little bit easier when, it's, uh, when you've got a little bit more time. See this bit here, this bit here, this piece of skin here, that would stay on the carcass and it's coming off with the skin. I should be able just to whip that and it just come off. But because of the bad weather we've been having, the guys have been going out, and then when I they needed these for this week, they went out and they shot a load of them all in one go. And of course then I just had to take whatever they had. decided to have a go right, and I, I actually uh, did uh, four skins. That's how I four skins. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did a, yeah, four, four row skins and uh, I got the chemicals to basically to do it and I tanned them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it's a long going progress, you know, process because you've got to uh, scrape all the meat off, you've got to then basically clean them up, you've got to jet wash them, you've got to add a chemical to it, let it dry, add another chemical, let it dry, add another, you know, it's not that. And, then what you have to do is you have to work the, 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 the hide. So normally over a gate or over a, a rounded shovel, you move it and move it and move it to make it pliable, to make it nice and soft so that you can wear it like a coat. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, it's like, like yeah. an ironing board. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like solid. And I ended up with an ironing board. <laughs> so, uh, I, just, I didn't have the patience to basically spend hours doing like that. You can do it, there's other ways to do it as well. You can do it the the way the North American, actually that hasn't come out too bad, then the way the North American Indians did it, uh, which is to use to use the brain of the animal. So they use the brain, and the brain has properties in it that will tan the meat, the, the hide. So what you do is make it into a paste, and then you rub it over the, the hide, and it will, it will tan it, it will cure it. Um, the other way to do it is to basically use urine. If you go to basically sort of places like um, Morocco, um, they tan leather in urine, they use pigeon guano, pigeon shit with water, and they mulch it up, and then they put it into these vats and they drop all of the, the skins into it, and what it does is it makes all the hairs fall off, tans the skin, and they wash them and wash them and wash them and produce leather. So that's how they do it. You could also, you could do it, with, like I say, if you use, in the UK, have you ever heard, you've all heard the expression taking the piss, right? Well, if, you're, if you were poor, and you were too poor to have a pot to piss in. Yeah. yeah? Well, that meant that basically in this country, you, in London, all the houses used to have a little pot. They used to pee in the pot, and then you'd sell your piss. Yeah. And if you were pissed poor, then you didn't even have a pot to piss in to sell your piss. Right. And the pot, the, the pee was used at the tanneries to tan leather. That's where all that, that those, there's loads of useless information. I know. <laughs> but um, that's that's where that that phrase came from. And um, yeah, with this, you can tan it using urine as well. So the easiest way to do it is to basically lay the skin out in a bath after you've cleaned it and then pee on it. But if your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend basically walks in while you're doing it, you might have a lot of explaining to them. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, nothing. <laughs> so now we've gone over the legs, yeah? And the legs, the front legs or shoulders, I should say, we have two ways of doing this. Yeah, one is to, uh, you can cut across the shoulder like I've done with this one. Where you just run your hand in it, pull that out. 
again. And the other one is where you go, you put it to the front of the shoulder and then you can take it off like a, like a glove. So now we're down to the neck, and this is where this animal's been shot. It's been shot in the neck. You can see the bruising there. Mm. So, with the military now, with a round for shooting deer, the it's very different to a military round. So deer rounds basically uh, make a small hole going in and a very large hole going out. Yeah, to basically try to make as much damage as possible to kill the animal and knock it on its ground. Military rounds are, they're different. They make a small hole going in and a small hole going out. Anybody know why? It's basically the bullet goes out? No. Nope. It's basically because if I shoot you, then your bullet goes straight through you, you're not dead. You're running around the floor going, ah! Right, and then him and her have to pick you up to take you off the battlefield. So there's three of you out of, out of the fight. So for every one person I shoot, three people are gone. So if I shoot three people, nine people are gone from the fight. Yeah, so that's why. <clears throat> so they're not meant to kill. You know, so meant to maim and hurt as much as possible, sort of thing. So here, this is the. This is the. You start to see the, the wounds here. This is like where we go all CSI you know, on this animal now. So this is the exit wound and this is the entrance this is the entrance wound here. Okay. Um, and actually to the light, that's the ex exit wound, and this is the entrance wound here on this side. Let's see. Nowadays basically most of the animals uh, well all the animals in the Forestry Commission are all shot with non-toxic lead, non-toxic bullets, so they're using copper. Um, so it means that when we've got a, uh, so the, the, the actual um, tag that's got on it has got blue writing, which means that it's non-toxic. That's how I know. Um, and the Forestry Commission has been using non-toxic uh, ammunition for a long, long time. Um, and with lead, um, where the shot has gone on the animal for seven centimetres around the shot, you, you're, you can't use it. You're not supposed to use it because of uh, risk of uh, lead contamination. There you go. So, if you look at the skin, so, if you look at that skin, you can see, so remember I was telling you about the, the capillaries in the skin, right? So these are the capillaries here, all of these. So all of this little spider's webs, and you can see some here that have got no color at all, but those capillaries are all full of blood. So if, we, if this animal hadn't been bled properly, it would be that red rosy colour, the whole of the skin, actually darker than that. And that means that the carcass, the, 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 the uh, blood could start to decompose. And it means that the, it would turn the carcass. 
So that means we'd have to get rid of the cargoes because basically it will already start to go off. So the fact that these are all empty, yeah, shows that the carcass was bled properly. 